Okay, let me continue uh, with the same topic of classification and uh, other things. Uh, quick review of soil mechanics, and in the uh, in the previous lecture, just I have uh, concluded that uh, when a civil engineers, uh, when a civil engineer uh, visit a site, uh, then based on uh, the site visit, one has to assess the soil type. That is most of the time it is very essential, and how in the field without any uh, instrument uh, uh, without any uh, formal testing, uh, how can assess in the field that we have, I have mentioned that uh, assess means uh, basically I have to classify whether soil contains uh, sand or silt or clay or in between. Uh, in fact, uh, if it is sand actually coarse sand very easy to identify by visual inspection, but when it is a fine sand and silt you will not be able to differentiate. So, because of that you need to carry out those tests like dilatancy and filling uh, uh, between the fingers and then plasticity test all those things you have to carry out and based on that uh, we can uh, briefly uh, can say that soil contains either sand or silt or clay or silt clay something like that. So, that will be enough uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for from the field whatever we expect, but after that uh, for uh, uh, various engineering analy analysis uh, you, you need to uh, the further characterize the soil and for uh, uh, characterization of the soil the first step is of, the, of, the, of this is actually proper classification and proper classification means what actually. Uh, uh, what size particles and what quantity is it is present and all uh, that is one thing and also as I have mentioned then the origin also you have to see first of all. Suppose it is from the site the one bag of soil has come and you have to uh, classify the soil how will start that is very important actually. Many times I ask this question to the student and they start actually telling that we will do sieve analysis, but it is not the case suppose the bag actually there is a big lump of soils. Uh, then uh, lump how we can uh, big lump of soil how we can see. So, that is what actually you have to see first what type of soil it is if it is a very dark brown uh, soil then that means the soil is actually and there is a some uh, smell on it that means the organic soil and organic soil cannot be classified by sieve. There is some other classification method which we will discuss one by one. Similarly, if you find that is a uh, free flowing sand type of things then obviously, you can go for uh, sieve analysis, but it, it, if the soil is in between then big lump you have to, to break it then you have to wash it if possible through particular sieve and then pa partly you have to do sieve analysis partly you have to do some other analysis and then based on that you have to come in conclusion the soil type. So, that is the thing that means you have to learn that when the bag of soil this question when it is asked you cannot blindly say that I will do sieve analysis, because you have to see the soil first what it is or how it has come. So, based on best first is the physical examination open the bag see the soil and then afterwards take the decision what you have to do the next. So, like that if suppose the soil is uh, free flowing and uh, uh, granular then obviously, you can go for uh, this uh, sieve analysis and for that. Uh, you can see that uh, I have I have shown here uh, that how uh, we carry out sieve analysis. You can see that there are number of sieves are kept one after another, and bottom most is the pan with, without opening, and this these sieves are having different size of openings. And as per Indian standard, different country will have different standard. As per our Indian standard, our sieve size ranges between uh, top most will be 4.75 millimeter and bottom most sieve will be 75 micron. Why is 75 micron is kept below the 75 micron size actually we treat as a shield and shield cannot be classified based on sieve analysis. So, up to the 75 micron soil we, we can do this sieve analysis. So, because of that we keep the bottom most pan as a pan without opening and we keep suppose 4.75, 2 millimeter, 1.1, 600 micron, 425 micron, 300 micron, 150 micron, 75. Sometime in between one or two uh, C may not be there, but basically they will be arranged like the higher size will be here and smaller size will be here 
and this will be without opening. So, finally, uh, we put a certain amount of soil in the in the sieve and then uh, subsequent sieve will be in the below below of that below to that and then we will be putting it can we can shake it by hand like this, but otherwise we can uh, put it in the shaker and we can put uh, 8 to 10 minutes uh, 10 15 minutes and then automatically if the soil particles is smaller than 4.75 then it will pass through and it can uh, it will come here and again further shaking if this is smaller than 2 millimeter it will pass through that it will come here and again if it is a smaller than 1.18 millimeter it will pass through it and it will retain it will come here like that finally it every sieve will retain some amount and pass some amount and finally from the 75 micron sieve will pass some amount and it will be retained here so those amount will be collected and finally I uh, will do some calculation that originally suppose I have taken a 500 gram of uh, soil and each uh, 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 sieve retained some amount suppose x 1 gram, x 2 gram, x 3 gram and then finally, retained on pan suppose x n gram. Then summation of all together put together should be whatever soil I have taken and most of the time we will see that whatever 500 gram we have taken I will not get 500 gram exactly it will be maybe 1 gram or a fraction of 1 gram will be less because of this while sieving some loss will be there. But we understand there will be loss, but if his loss is too much suppose 4 500 gram and you have got 490 gram 10 gram loss that should is not acceptable. So, you have to very carefully conduct this that if you have 500 gram and finally, the soil collected from each sieve retained and that cumulative weight should be also close to very close to 500 gram. And once you get that and then from that we, what you have to do you can again uh, 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 retained in the soil in the particular sieve and then percent retained uh, another column you pre prepare and then cumulative percent retained you prepare one and then uh, last column will be percent finer. Suppose a particular sieve cumulative retained is 20 cumulative retained as level 1 point or 2 millimeter suppose 20 that means, 80 percent soil finer than 2 millimeter. So, percent finer. So, that is the way we calculate and then based on that we uh, plot the graph one side actually the grain size uh, that means, grain size is approximately same as uh, whatever uh, sieve size we take okay. and so uh, this is the sieve size in a particular sieve uh, suppose 2 millimeter sieve the percent return is 20 percent. So, that means, cumulative percent return that means, 80 percent is finer. So, I will go to the 2 millimeter suppose somewhere here uh, 1 and then it will be 2 millimeter is here and cumulative percent is 20 that means, percent finer is 80. So, percent finer is here. So, I will find out the 80 here and point will be located here like that uh, for, from corresponding to each uh, sieve size uh, what is the percent finer those points I will plot in a semi-log paper and then finally, join them and I will get a curve and from that curve I will get the proper uh, grain size distribution that means, what size of particles and what quantity it is there in the particular mass that can be uh, obtained. And this calculation is shown in the uh, next slide you can see whatever uh, whatever I have said uh, in my previous one you can see here. Uh, this uh, uh, you can see that uh, 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 sieve size is given 4.75 uh, 4.75 millimeter 2.4 1 point this is actually this size actually based on some other it is not as per uh, it is of course uh, 2.36 sometimes we write 240 it was 1.18 now you can write 1.2 600 420 by 300 150 like that pan. So, one such calc uh, test actually suppose a 4.4.75 micron sieve the return is this 2.4 uh, uh, millimeter sieve return is this like that weight retained in each sieve is first collected that is the only thing we carry out during test and then rest of the things will do calculation later on a cumulative weight retained. So, here there is no sieve above that. So, cumulative retained and uh, retained same. So, and when we go to this at this level cumulative return will be this plus this 
So, these two together will have cumulative return. Similarly, when you go to this level, your cumulative return will be this all summation of these three. Similarly, at this point if you reach then cumulative return will be entire summation of this. And when I will do cumulative return, uh, cumulative weight return and cumulative percent return. So, that means, out of suppose 500 gram this much. So, what is the percent? Out of 500 this much is the cumulative what is the percent? So, like that this is a cumulative percent return and after getting cumulative percent return then finally, percent final then 100 minus this that will be 96, 100 minus this this. So, like that I get this the data and then I will plot finally, this versus this and x axis is the grain dia, grain dia and y axis is the percent finer, percent finer. So, based on that I will plot and then I will get the uh, joining those points I will get the grain size distribution graph from there I can find out whether soil is fine or coarse or medium all those type of things uh, information I can gather. And of course, uh, when it is uh, this type of classification can be used only when the soil is mostly sand ok may be some amount of silt present and if it is not then of course, what you have to do uh, we uh, you need to uh, wash the soil and you have to uh, uh, through 75 micron sieve you have to wash and then I mean finer particle than 75 micron will pass through uh, the 75 micron and then from that washed portion whatever sediment I will get that to be dried and from that dried portion I can also uh, some amount I can take and carry out the hydrometer analysis the actually grain size distribution curve for fine soil sometime can be done hydrometer analysis. And if you do this wash method then what you have to do by the retained 75 micron soil you will do grain size and past uh, 75 micron you do uh, hydrometer analysis then we combine them and finally, we get the curve and based on that curve shape sometime we can also assess the soil type. That means, just you have the mass, but uh, you do not know what size of particles and what percentage it is present, but if you know the curve then you can say easily and if you know that then you will be able to assess the various characteristics of the soil. So, like that when we will uh, 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 when we uh, draw the uh, grain size distribution curve and based on that distribution curve we compute two coefficient. One is actually coefficient of uniformity which is defined as d 60 by d 10. What is d 60 and what is d 10? d 10 actually diameter corresponding to 10 percent finer. Suppose there is a plot here and 10 percent finer is here and the curve is something like this I will produce on this 10 percent finer then corresponding size that is actually d 10 this is d 10. So, that means, size corresponding to 10 percent finer similarly, if it is a 60 percent finer and I will produce on this and then I will come here this will be your d 60. So, from the curve when I will get the grain size distribution curve from there actually I will find out d 10 and d 60 how to find out d 10 and d 60 if 10 percent find out finer you locate 60 percent finer you locate and that you produce on that uh, grain size that you produce on the grain size this will give you d 10 and this will give you d 60 and they are two numbers and this num this ratio of two numbers will get another number that that can be fraction of course uh, some uh, number will get and that is called coefficient of uniformity coefficient and based on that how we will classify I will come later on. And then another coefficient we, that is called coefficient of curvature cc there is d 10 and d 60 as it is there and there is another d 30 that means, in between there may be 30 percent finer you locate produce on the curve from there whatever you will get that is called d 30 that is about d 30. Then d 30 square divided by d 10 multiplied by d 60 that will give you another number and that number actually again give you some information about the soil type. So, coefficient of uniformity and coefficient of curvature these two and so how what we can learn you can see that 
a large coefficient of uniformity that means cu correspond to a large range in grain size that means cu is large means the the range of particles are large that means from small to big every particles are there and soil is regarded as well graded that means uh, if the cu is large that means all sides of particles are present that means small particles to big particles all particles then that is called well graded that means all size particles are present in the soil then it is called well graded and a coefficient of 1 represents soil size of the same magnitude that means the if the curve is something like this curve is something like this that means by a large that is suppose 100 and that is suppose 1 and uh, in between there is not curve is not no variation that means single size of particles present maximum quantity and if you calculate uniformity coefficient you may get close to 1 that be coefficient of 1 represent the soil size of the same magnitude that means all size particles are same and if all size are size are present same then that is called uniform soil and generally soils whose cu is less than 4 are considered as uniform so though actually if it is 1 it is perfectly uniform and when it is less than 4 we treat them as a uniform soil though it is vertical there may be little slanting like maybe like that. So, based on that we can get the value between 1 and 4 and if you get the value 1 and 4 then those soil will be treated as uniform and if it is a more than that then it is called well graded. And when soil mechanics actually most of the time uh, 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 many uh, activities we expect uniformity and uniformity is a uh, good uh, in the sense it is a good uh, parameter most of the cases, but in soil mechanics the uniform is not a good parameter soil when the soil is uniform that means a bad actually they are not they will have more pores actually the uh, porosity will be high. So, the soil, uni soil uniform means it is not a good one in fact we expect always well graded when it is well graded means what different size of particles are present that means smaller particles can be there in between bigger particles and, and this way the soil will be more compact state and it will be have more strength. So, all those things we will discuss uh, we have already discussed in the soil mechanics and one second I will just uh, highlighting that. So, well graded soil is better than the uniform soil. Similarly, if when you calculate another parameter that is cc, the cc is the measure of the shape of the grain size distribution curve, how it will be the you can see the I have shown the curve is a perfectly S type and for a cu value of about 1 the soil is considered well graded close to 1 when we get that soil is be well graded and for cu much less that is much smaller than uh, 1 that means about 0.5 or 0.4 or much larger than 1 that means maybe 3 4 then the soil is views as poorly graded that means uh, if it is a, that means if you want to be uh, 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 well graded then it has to be between 1 and 3. So, cu much less or much larger than 1 the soil is viewed as poorly graded greater than 3 and less than 1 the soil is poorly graded and to become well graded it should be between the range. So, uh, well graded and poor, poorly graded means one of the uh, uniform soil also can be uh, classified as poorly graded or sometime uh, some soil there are large number of particle size are there, but one or two particles totally missing. So, they are also can be treated as poorly graded. So, like that based on CU and CC we can get this information and that will help actually to assess the other strength characteristics of the uh, soil. And as I have mentioned that uh, uh, the beginning I have mentioned that when the we get a bag of soil then you have to see and you have to take the action one by one and as I have told you when you get the sand and shield uh, uh, flow uh, free flowing sand type of soil then you can do grain size if it is shield present then you can pass through and uh, uh, carry out hydrometer analysis. But sometimes if you find more amount of shield and sand then in that a shield and clay 
in that case actually you can do classification by another means that is called plasticity chart. And what is that plasticity chart actually? There are soil will have the plastic uh, the fine grain soil will have plast, uh, plasticity characteristic like uh, consistency limits like liquid limit plastic limit I will discuss that in the subsequent slide. And based on the calculation of plastic liquid, uh, liquid limit we can find out the plasticity index and one side liquidity uh, liquid limit. The actual this is the plasticity chart there is a A line and it has a definite equation. Uh, this equation actually uh, can be uh, written in this form uh, there is a line and this axis is a or liquid limit and this axis is a plasticity index and that these lines are there and then there are vertical lines. And if I carry out test on a particular soil and if I get a liquid limit suppose 40 LL suppose 40 and plastic limit suppose 20 then PI will be equal to 20. So, PI 20 is somewhere here and liquid limit 40 is somewhere here then 40 and 20 the soil the point will come here. That means, this soil come here means the, the amount of a particular amount of soil I have taken for a particular sample and carried out liquid limit and plastic limit test and then I have got this value and then based on that value I have plotted that point of plastic limit versus a plasticity index versus liquid limit on this chart and the point came here. When point it comes here we understand many things what is that? The soil will be classified as C i, C i means what? Clay of high plasticity, a clay, clay of intermediate plasticity. Similarly, if another situation it comes suppose, suppose somewhere here, then what I understand about the soil it is CH. What is the meaning of CH? The clay of high plasticity. Similarly, I have another sample and based on the test and I get a point somewhere here. That means, what will understand about the soil? The soil is either MH that means, silt of high plasticity or OH that means, organic of high plasticity. Suppose, I get another soil sample and based on the test whatever I get the point comes here then what I will understand about the soil it is of silt of intermediate plasticity or organic of intermediate plasticity. Similarly, it can come here it can anywhere it can go and based on this chart I can classify the fine grain soil whether it is CH, CI, MH, OH, MI, OI like this. And once we, I can classify this that means, the soil of uh, CA is that means, clay of high plasticity means it is a problematic soil generally and you have to take care while designing the foundation system. So, that is the thing we have to understand through soil mechanics. And of course, whatever I have mentioned about the plastic, plastic, uh, plastic limit, liquid limit, there are we, uh, we in soil mechanics we have discussed this, and you can see the procedure for plastic limit test that actually we have to um, uh, soil paste you have to make, and there is a cassegrain apparatus, and on that cassegrain apparatus you have to cut a groove, and then you have to uh, give the uh, number of blows, and the water content corresponding to that uh, actually liquid limit is nothing but water content at a particular stage and that particular stage actually uh, uh, when uh, water content is such in this soil you require only 25 blows to cut the grooves that is the definition. And so, uh, by single trial it is difficult to do because of that we mix with different percent of water and then we carry out test and see water content versus number of blows and finally, plot number of blows versus water content and finally, 25 blows corresponding to point uh, 20, uh, water content corresponding to 25 blows I get from this curve and that will be defined as liquid limit. And similarly, uh, plastic limit test also we generally make a soil paste and uh, we generally roll on the uh, uh, glass plate by our uh, uh, palm with light pressure and we try to make a thread or wire like and when we will be able to make uh, 3 millimeter diameter of wire like uh, material and it will not just about to crack that is the stage and that water content is actually plastic it is very 
looks like very simple, but it is very difficult to carry out this test generally you need lot of experience and you have to do again and again and based on that uh, finally, you will get the plastic limit. So, the plastic limit was actually it is also water content at a particular stage. How to do? We will make a uh, uh, soil lump with uh, water and then roll over the glass plate with light pressure and we will try to make it uh, wear like of 3 millimeter uh, thing and then when we will see that when about to make 3 millimeter of uh, wear and it is just trying to crumble that means, that is the uh, that is the plastic limit. Okay. So, that is, that is the plastic limit. So, that plastic limit and liquid limit if you know and based on that I can find out plasticity index I p which is actually used one of the axis in the plasticity chart and other axis actually liquid limit and this this two actually to be calculated and based on that I can find out the classification of the soil type. And you can see that finally, soil classification can be done and uh, this is actually two symbols we use uh, one is prefix another is subgroup uh, soil uh, first one is the soil type and second one is actually subgroup and you can see if the soil is written as uh, G sorry. Uh, if the soil is treated as uh, 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 G G W that means, it is well graded gravel. So, that is that that means, it is a basically first letter indicates the soil type and second one what type. So, it is well graded. So, like that similarly this, there can be a soil of uh, actually see uh, 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 silty sand uh, that means, if you have uh, two letters we will be using. Uh, soil of uh, S M. If I use that as S M, what I understand by this? It is basically sand mixed with silt. So, that is why we have to write silty sand, some amount of silt present in the sand. So, like that two letters we use, this is also I have discussed in length in the soil mechanics and uh, that is of course, uh, you have to uh, understand that how by using two letters soil will be classified or if you get a soil report and the soil is classified by two letters then you have to understand what it is. And then steps in soil uh, uh, classification I already mentioned this that first of all you have to see determine whether given soil is of organic origin or coarse grain or fine grain that I have uh, opened the bag and see that. Then if 50 percent or more of the soil by weight is retained on the 75 micron C, then it is coarse grain and if not it is fine grain and if 50 percent of the coarse grain fraction is retained on the 4.75 millimeter C, then soil can be classified as gravel uh, and if not if reverse is happened then it is a sand and the soil fraction passing through the 75 micron C is less than 5 percent determine the gradation of the soil by calculating C U C C from the that means, if the fine parts with less than 5 percent then based on grain size distribution curve you can classify that will be enough, but if you are passing more than 12 percent that 75 micron then you have to do something else. You can see that uh, if more than 12 percent passes through the 75 micron C then perform the liquid limit and plasticity limit test on the soil fraction passing through the 425 micron sieve use the IS plasticity chart to determine the classification. So, this is as I have mentioned sometimes you have to do grain size, sometimes you have to do plasticity chart, sometimes you have to do both also. And if the soil is fine determine the liquid limit and plasticity limit on the soil fraction uh, passing 425 micron sieve and determine the plasticity index. And if the limits plots below the A line that means, uh, of course, as I have shown the I have explained the plasticity below the A line the soil is sealed and again further if the liquid limit is less than 35 classifies ML if liquid limit is 35 to 40 classifies MI that we intermediate and high and then liquid limit is greater than for 50 is classified MH. So, like that as I have mentioned 
if the limits plot above a line the classify as a clay and again clay can be intermediate plasticity, medium plasticity and high plasticity that I have mentioned. So, how that is the various steps of classification by plasticity chart and finally, uh, a prime grain soil sometimes we also classify by another important term that is called relative density and that relative density you can see defined by dr equal to e max minus e by e max minus e minimum. Uh, e max means actually the void ratio in the loosest state and e minimum means void ratio at the densest state. So, if you have a soil granular soil sample we can find out its e max and e minimum by laboratory test that means, you have to create the situation of densest state create another situation of loosest state and corresponding void ratio you have to find out and in situ void ratio you have to find out and based on that you can calculate uh, sorry you can uh, you can calculate this uh, 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 dr and that that will give you a number and based on that number you can classify the soil uh, as uh, uh, in the next slide you can see that in relative density is less than 50 percent means soil is very loose and uh, relative density between 15 to 35 percent it is a loose only and if between 35 to 65 it is medium and 65 to 85 it is a dense and greater than 85 percent is a very dense. In fact, uh, uh, relative density greater than 85 percent is very difficult to achieve and of course, sometimes you may able to achieve 95 percent, 90, 92 percent, but these are the things classification based on relative density of the soil. That means, if you have a sand sample uh, carry out some test find out E max, E minimum and void ratio in situ void ratio and then carry out dr and if you know the dr that is a value you will get and that value if based on the the position of this value we can classify the soil either as a loose condition uh, very loose condition less dense condition or very dense condition obviously loose means soil is very poor condition and dense means or very dense means soil is in a good condition so that is also another type of classification to assess the strength and compressibility behavior of the soil so that means by this type of classification will help you first to understand the soil. Still we do not know what will be the strength and other things that I have to do some more things I will come in the subsequent slides. Thank you.